Councillors, I'd like to introduce you and welcome you to the Sandwich Tolbridge Fund Museum and Archive Committee. <coughs> um, and tonight you have all had the agenda from the town clerk to read and the appertaining reports thereof created by the museum creator. Um, item number one is apologies for our absence received. Do we have any town We clerk? do. Uh, Councillor Dean Marie, uh, work commitment. Oh, super. Thank you very much for that. Okay. And item number two is declarations of interest. And this is to receive any declarations of disclosable pecuniary interests from members of this committee in respect of businesses uh, to be transacted on this particular agenda tonight. Do we have any declarations? Mm -hmm. no, no, there's none. So, and item number three is public participation. And this is a 20-minute uh, um, session is set aside for members of the public to make representations at the meeting in respect of the business on the agenda. Individual representation should not exceed five minutes. Written notice of the desire to exercise the right to speak together with the topic to be addressed must be given to the town clerk prior to noon on the day of the meeting. Do we have any participants. No requests. No requests. Thank you very much, Town Clerk. Item number four is minutes of the previous meeting and this is to approve the minutes of the ordinary meeting of the Sandwich Tolbridge Fund Museum and Archive Committee held on the 23rd of November and to consider any matters arising from those minutes not covered elsewhere in this agenda. Um, do we have any matters to raise? Oh, yeah. Councillor Anderson. Yes. I'm sorry, I was to get to that question. <coughs> yes, um, I'd like us to look at minute number MA112026. Um, as I remember it, the agenda from the last meeting, which was three months ago, is that right? Was unique quarterly included um, data on visitor numbers, donations, um, and so on. And <coughs> I was rather hoping that every quarter we would be presented with data of that kind because the museum, apart from the hiring of rooms in a gallery, is also. Um, an income generator um, and um, it's also part of the service that we offer um, to residents and visitors and <clears throat> I would like I would like a, every quarterly agenda to include that kind of data so that we know um, possibly on a weekly basis using a graph how our visitors' numbers are changing. Um, we can see whether temporary exhibitions are generating more visitors, for example, um, and more donations. Um, and I would also like that data to include data on the volunteers, the numbers of volunteers that we have. Um, <coughs> how many hours that they commit to per week, and so on. Um, so that we just get an idea of how the museum is working, and we can reflect on that data at all our meetings. I'm pleased to see the town clerk is nodding. Um, yes, just to say that this was the first, sorry, the November meeting was the first meeting since the new council formed. Yes. Yes. So yes. there wasn't any history of that no. gone before. No. I'm certainly um, willing to sit down with the museum coordinator um, because obviously it will depend on capacity as well of the, you know, the staff yes. here. So um, I'm nodding because I'm, I'm thinking that is a good idea. 
but what I don't want to commit to at the moment until I've had a conversation with the museum coordinator is about capacity. I just want to say, so we will have quarterly meetings, the last one was in November, so this, I see this technically as an extra meeting because we have things that happen around, uh, well, with the deadline of April, which you would not have an update on in time if we were waiting for an extra meeting. But that's really why that's here. So the decision um, that I made might definitely be discussed. Because I think the mayor or the town clerk, I definitely mentioned it, that this meeting wouldn't have an update like last time because it was an extra one. So at the quarterly ones, they will, and it is with the terms of reference that I would do that. It's just so I think you sure understand sure. that this is not a quarterly meeting, this is an additional meeting. Yes, yes the last one was in November. So we'll be having five meetings this year. Potentially more if there's no more extra. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So, um, uh, and I have another item to raise, um, and that's about co-opted committee members. Um, and um, I see that we approved the request to recruit two co-opted members with specific expertise, the first with finances and budgeting and the second with education expertise. And I wondered how that recruitment process is going. Uh, we have not actually used that one yet um, okay. for various reasons. committee be engaged with that process because you know some of us might know suitable people who would <coughs> fulfill um, a job description or a co-option description that relates to finance and budgeting or education mm -hmm. and we might know people who might fulfill that role but um, you know that perhaps the committee should be Involved in in that process, both of writing the role description, if there is such a thing, and also perhaps making suggestions as to who might be approached. But can we definitely we can. I think you should have to write those. Right, you should put notice up, yourself. Otherwise, you might miss people. Yes. If you're only asking people, is if you never asked me. Yes. That so I think. Point of yeah, and I think if you get a, a list of names and that list of names should come to the back of the committee, then we can put it down to two. I think it would be opportune for the museum coordinator to detail the actual yeah. description of what we're looking for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that, that, can, that can go on the future agenda. Yeah. Um, Facebook page. Yeah. Um, and then we can um, share it as a public agency. It's a similar process to if you, a different with a different structure, a museum might. Uh, recruit to their trustee board and it would be their recruiting volunteers to be on the trustee board so it's a similar kind of process um, and we discussed last time about that being those being more like uh, contracted roles for what is beneficial to the museum at the time what work what projects we have in mind for the next year or so Concerned about the water ingress, and has that been dealt with? Um, sure. <laughs> um, so I've had a conversation with the heritage officer of Dover District, and what we the situation is at the moment we've got to allow it to completely dry, and it's not dry yet. So obviously this time of year it's very difficult because it is still damp weather. So I, I suspect we're going to have to wait until the end of the summer and then assess the situation. Okay. Yeah. Um, what was the cause though? Was it caused by the, the brook gutter overflowing? I haven't ever noticed it before. Yeah, years. we're not entirely sure yet, but obviously we have had the gutters all cleaned. Yeah, yeah. And that's something I think we're going to have to do probably a quarterly basis because yeah. when you get these big storms, the moss is just driven down the roof and, and it's very easily blocking the gutters. You've got pigeons up there roosting. Yeah, exactly. Well. Um, so, so that's something we need to keep an eye on, yeah. and, and that's what the heritage officer said. You've had the gutters clean now, monitor the situation, 
you know, have to wait for the, the good weather so it has an opportunity to dry and then assess it after you, you had a good period of dry weather. Have any more questions? Well, at all? there are quite a few questions um, arising out of it. I think um, possibly that, that they can wait until April, but I do hope for the April meeting. But I do hope in the April meeting we'll be updated on where some of these action points have got to, because I'm not believing in general. Um, need somebody to propose that these minutes are acceptable and somebody to second those. Yeah, I'll propose. Yeah. Councillor Franklin to propose. <coughs> Councillor Ripley to second those. And all those in favour of the minutes? I have to abstain. Okay. 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 Did you want to abstain? Oh, that's alright. Okay. We can go on happy with one. Two abstentions. Thank you. So those are passed. Number five is the accreditation scheme. And members are to receive and note the update on the museum accreditation scheme. And this is attachment to a <coughs> this is to receive an update on the museum accreditation scheme. And um, I don't know, has everybody read these documents so that they know what they contain here? This is the Arts Council England has released a list for phase one of the Museum Accreditation Returns 2024. Sandwich Guildhall Museum is not on the list. Final date for submission on the list is the 1st September 2024. An accreditation advisor has suggested it's likely the list Phase two will require submission by October 2024 at the earliest, although this is not confirmed. Well, but uh, we've just made the uh, recommendation. Oh, sure, yeah. Okay, then. Okay. So the recommendation are no, members are asked to question. receive and note the update on the museum accreditation scheme. Um, but questions. Yeah, I've got a couple of questions about this. Indeed, um, please raise them. I just, I mean, we, there's still a great deal of work to be done, obviously, and I know that we've got some dates in it. Um, however, the ones that strike me as critical, but we haven't necessarily got dates, is an emergency plan. And secondly, I'm just surprised that the volunteer document, the volunteer policy, um, not urgent, but would be beneficial. Um, I'm not quite sure how that ties in with the volunteer handbook to be complete by end of May 2024. Can I understand how the two tie in this? Uh, not the emergency one, that's obviously a separate issue. Mm -hmm. um, so the reason the volunteer documents are written up is because they are, um, and perhaps I should add this to the date in, they were updated in 2019, so they were updated um, quite a lot later than a lot of the other documents. Um, there are drafts um, of them. I, I have, from my memory, there's not a huge amount of updates for them, but they also rely on certain town council policies being um, in place where they sort of that would be in the appendix, for example. Um, so they're kind of, because they rely on that information, it's not e easy to kind of complete them fully and provide them <coughs> with as much information yet um, and I also think it would be useful to discuss them with the town clerk as well um, but the main reason is because they were updated fairly recently so it's not that they're not urgent it's just that the other items are perhaps dated much earlier so I just would like them in place um, first uh, because they are out of date and not approved um, so that's the main reason. But again, they I, 
I, I would like them to be done. I have plans for them to be done before our accreditation return. It's just that the other ones require quite a lot of work, more work. So I just want to get them done uh, sooner. The emergency plan is, again, it was fairly recently done. Um, it requires a lot of work and a lot, or a lot of information gathering, which the main reason it hasn't been done is just an issue of capacity, that the other ones are slightly easier to progress um, at this stage. It also requires, again, understanding the town council emergency plans for the, the guild hall and how we can kind of write the emergency plan in a way that it, it links in with those plans and it's not confusing for anyone. So again, it's kind of, it is partially, partially there, um, again, thanks to the previous plans, the same as the volunteer document, I just, um, it's sort of, the other policies are just a little bit easier to get in place mm -hmm. and approved, um, that's the main reason. Yeah. Yeah, I have one, just one other question. Um, are volunteers tied to the council's um, social media policy? So. I have, at the moment, the new policy for the volunteers I've written um, says they are, um, they will be covered by um, relevant town council policies such as, and it will include social media policy and any other policies that, that we decide to add, basically, so that I, I think that's the plan anyway, so that they we don't have to ask volunteers to sign a new agreement every time, but they understand that there might be a new policy that comes out in relation to the town council that will also affect them, and they have to, then they're signed to be in this. That's over, yes. And the answer at the moment is they are not covered. Um, it, I don't believe it's in the, the current policy um, that they will have agreed to through yeah. their uh, mm. volunteer agreements. Yeah. Councillor when this is introduced, uh, Lily, um, is it possible that all volunteers would sign up to this? Because I think that would be quite important. Um, so I am, so we have, obviously volunteers have signed an agreement anyway. But they're not um, to, okay. So there is, and I mean, I'm happy to, to be told the best way to do this. Um, either we have a whole new agreement that, that, I mean, they signed an agreement, but the policy, I don't believe, is actually attached, you know, that it's a separate agreement form, I think we all have signed one as well, um, that's, that's, so they don't necessarily have access to that policy, as far as I'm aware, or they haven't. Um, again, all of their documents will be provided to them, they'll have a folder, obviously, secure information, things like that will be removed, but they'll have, I think, access to them through, like, the museum desk as a folder or something like that, so they can check that information and read over them. Um, but yeah, it would either be that everyone has to sign a new agreement, which yeah, I'm absolutely happy to do, but it's, it's one of those things that can be slightly difficult to manage. Um, or I would request uh, like a, a written um, written agreement that they approve, you know, if it's via email or something like that, and then I will take that hard copy and file it. Happy to be told that we have issued whole new agreements for everyone. That's fine. Whatever is. And that's how it should be. It should be undertaken. It will definitely be in writing either way that they're agreeing. One way or the they've understood the. That's agenda. right. Yeah. 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 And any any policies that to volunteers will be flagged up. Yeah. And it's actually HR best practice. You don't actually have to say these are the policies you have to read, mm -hmm. but you just have to say these are the policies that are appertaining to your contract and that it is down to them to, to actually sign those up. Um, I just wanted to add in relation to that, one of the other things, and that is another reason that the policy isn't written yet, is the procedure for if someone um, has done something that doesn't fit within those policies. Mm -hmm. And that's something that, again, it's a discussion for the town clerk about what our procedure is. Because I know the procedures for um, other examples for other museums. So um, that's one of the key things that needs to be included. Well, indeed, um, policing of the policies, that's correct. Thank you for that. Uh, Councillor Anderson. Yes, I was going to, on the same theme. Um, as I understand it, when 
the town council, the full town council considered the social media policy, which I think was Revolution. It was October on the Venn mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. that we did actually make ensure that everybody was covered who has a relationship with the golf ball, including the volunteers. Mm -hmm. So um, that's my question number one. How is it that that social media policy um, doesn't apply currently at the moment? Yes, so it, it doesn't apply at the moment because we don't have the volunteer policy in place. I've taken that to the Human Resources Committee, but I do need to sit down with Millie and obviously we need to dovetail so that the volunteer policy that I'm bringing through to Council, which didn't happen this meeting because there were too many other items, um, but once we've had the conversation with Millie, that will be coming to Council to be adopted and that will then apply to volunteers as well for all the policies like Millie's saying, social media policy and anything else that Council think would be appropriate. And I agree with many, it should be a volunteer agreement so that people are given the policies or at least by email to say, these are the policies, this is what you're signing in the volunteer agreement, you agree to abide by these policies and this is the consequence if something happens. So it's very clear and upfront with everybody and then they've got a choice of whether they want to abide by the policies or no longer volunteer. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay, so another question also on this topic because I'm not quite clear now. So we can expect <coughs> a council, a full council, to look at all the policies that relate to volunteers at the next council meeting, is that right? So the volunteer policy has been to the Human Resources Committee, yes. but I do need to have time to have a conversation with Millie, because obviously she's working on the museum policies, and what I don't want to do is, is introduce something that's adopted that doesn't fit with what Millie's work as well. So we've got to be careful that we you know, dovetail in here because what we don't want is two separate policies. We want it to be you know, a, a, across the board. Um, and once that volunteer policy is adopted by council, um, and we've had, I've had the conversation with Millie, then that would mean that the other policies that are mentioned in the volunteer policy, those volunteers would be then committed to uh, following the policies. Okay, so the areas at which volunteers might be covered by all these policies, mm -hmm. including the social media policy, mm -hmm. <coughs> is April or May? Well, it depends on how quickly I can get that report to yeah. council. Because if, if it can come through for February or March, it will be yeah. February or March. Okay, yeah. because I do think it's urgent. Mm -hmm. um, I think there have been issues. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I think it is urgent. Thank you. Um, I'd like to ask about inventory and cataloguing, uh, seven and eight. Uh, I noticed that seven point one, the museum should be able to produce a complete list of every object or group of objects within its collection and their location. That's a, a statement of intent, is it, rather than a statement of the situation as it as it currently exists. Uh, well, I'm, which item are you? No, this is the. Documentation planning? Which is the one there? That's right, yeah. Number 10 on the. It's that one. Would you like to say that? Right. It must tie into the overall accreditation policy. Sorry. These policies. Um, the Council of Horses has mentioned. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, I know they're fairly again, but they must tie in surely to the accreditation. Yes, they are a so it's under documentation planning, yeah. but it is a, a requirement of accreditation. But I yeah. believe it's yeah, it does tie in. I don't think it's mentioned in this report. But I'm, documentation I'm, policy and collection development policy and documentation plan yeah. Yeah. on page. First page of your accreditation mm -hmm. at the bottom. Yeah. Yep, so the inventory, those projects do tie in, so I, I can explain now, but I don't know if it's easier to give the context no, of the other report. It, it, it's all interwoven. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. So um, I believe we had somebody to propose the Councillor Franklin. Yeah, I did, yeah. 
accreditation. Um, did we have somebody to second the um, accreditation? Are there any recommendations for and from this discussion? I'm not going to modify this. Wait, I don't think any recommendations. Um, this one, isn't it? Oh, to receive. Councillor Black was asking oh, from the discussions we've just now. Oh, I see. Just I see. Now. Yeah. Discussions. Obviously, yeah. sure they've taken place, aren't they? Because you know they're just being formalised. They're being formalised. Yeah. I mean, I, I haven't really taken any recommendations. I've been yeah. taking notes, obviously, and I've, I've okay. acknowledged that we want the uh, volunteer We're policy to be prioritised. The volunteer policy. It's a much important. more important pri priority than has been suggested here. I think one or two of my colleagues might agree with that. <coughs> yeah. So yeah. No, on that basis, that okay. should be an amendment. I mean, all I will say is it just depends on capacity. And I know I, I sound like a broken record, but I, what I can't promise you is this will uh, be I, I wasn't asking yeah. you that. I was just saying, can we to move up the flyer if you want? Yeah, I, I've made a note of it in the, okay. in the minutes. I'll record it in the minutes. Yeah. So with that amendment, um, is everybody happy to vote for the yeah. accreditation scheme? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Item number six is the aim higher and OHC <coughs> grant um, members to re, uh, to receive a note, an update on the aim higher and OHC grant, which is attachment three. This is to receive an update regarding the AIM Higher and the Organisational Health Check. Um, I don't know if you want me to read this all out to you at all. Um, just a synopsis of it. Yeah. That'd be, thank um, you very much. So, we were, I think last time I gave a verbal update because it was extra information that wasn't in the report. Um, so, we were allocated an AIM Higher package from South East New Zealand's development. Um, uh, you will know because you had an email about the consultant visiting. Um, so that is taking place as part of the project. Um, I had to write a very short application having been allocated it anyway. So um, we have some outcomes on here, um, measurable outcomes. So mostly that hoping the floor plan will be ready by the end of April. Um, the, the consultant will be helping me and talking to me about that. Obviously it will be supplied to the committee and, and I can ask for um, thoughts on that beforehand. I imagine it will we'll have a, a draft of it by then so obviously it will come and we can work through it and take comments and things on it. Um, committee members having um, a kind of introductory session with the consultant so that's really helpful for her to, to meet the committee um, and sort of see how things work here. And I have put in, so I discussed about I think the committee handbook. So that is something that we'll create, create, which just gives some information and, and will support people um, in various ways. For example, if I, I was not available and some, some, for some reason it just provides information on, on how things are done. Um, at the kind of operation or uh, things like that just would be useful um, for the committee to know. And the recruitment pre procedures again, it's part of the volunteer document, so that's something else that we're hoping to do. Um, in relation to this, so the aim hire package and the health check are separate projects, but they interlink. So we applied for funding off the back of our OHC report and we got that funding so we've got two thousand um, pounds to put towards something that was recommended in the report so the original hope was that it would give us more consultant time but it can't really be done until we've done our aim higher um, project first and hopefully if if the consultant is is willing then we can use that two thousand pounds to fund some more of her time if not it they're happy for it to go towards something within the ohc um recommendations that we put in that report and i can um i will once we we know that situation i will contact south east museums just to make sure that they are happy with what we might be providing them for just to clarify if we get them to use funding for something that they aren't happy with obviously 
So um, that's hopefully a rough update on that. Sorry, ask a question first. Was there a, a time scale to the grant that we've been given? Is it like 12 months or 24 months to use that? Yeah, at all? it's usually about a year, but they do know our situation. Um, so obviously, this the so the Empire package project needs to be done by April. Um, so that's why the consultant is coming to the time soon, and she'll be working with us. But it does it is a, this time plan that sort of allows time for that to over continue on after it's the beginning of April, and then after that we'll assess how that funding will be used. It should be within the year, I believe. Um, but we have quite a good relationship with South East New Zealand, so I was going to say it might be flexible. Mm -hmm. That's excellent, Councillor Black. Yes, can I just ask what the top line objectives are of the training for the committee members? Just sort of the top three or four points. What the reason for that? No, the, the actual objective of the training, the specific objective. What do we want? What do you want us to come away from the training having a better understanding of? So the it was advised that was in the OH, OHC report that it would be useful to just provide some background on how um, museums operate um, and that was advised um, and that's really the consultant is coming to, to meet everyone but also to just give a, she wanted to she said she would sort of support you in your role as a committee and provide um, kind of introduction again to how her phrasing is how, how modern museums operate and also just what you know the different things they can be for the community and just kind of receive a note the above report relating to the aim higher mm. and the occupational health check so um, is uh, everybody happy with that yeah and i'll cancel and yes i propose that yes, yes. yes. and councillor franklin mm -hmm. okay. yes. is that pretty much all those in favor of the yeah. unanimous thank you very much for that okay. and then item number seven is statement of purpose this is for members to receive a report regarding the museum's statement <coughs> on purpose and decisions are required on this matter. This is attachment number four. This is to receive a report regarding the museum's statement of purpose. And there's a bit of a background there. Um, the actual statement of purpose um, has been laid out there in front of you and we have two recommendations members are asked to recommend the trustee approves the statement of purpose for the museum if that's your intention and then members are asked to recommend the trustees approve the addition of the statement of purpose in any already approved policies so does anybody have any questions on that? Would you like to? Um, I, it might have been mentioned here. I just wanted to say this This is the state pretty much, the, might be a slight change to wording, but this is the statement of purpose that was submitted quite a while ago, where it was in the last board plan in 2019. It's rooted in the legislation. Um, so it's not that it's new written, it's just that I thought it'd be useful to to make sure everyone's happy with it and the 
That's very useful. Thank you for that. Um, questions? I think there are some questions. I've gone to the question. Oh, yes. Oh, oh, super. Okay. Black, do you have a question? Exactly what has been asked for both of them. Is it the final thing of the museum's purpose to preserve the heritage of town sandwiches, artifacts, and advancing public education, in other words, those two lines? Because the other one is legislated, the whole description about the act. You know, which is it you're asking us to? So oh. um, the statement of purpose, so where it begins, um, Sandwich Guildhall Museum, so underneath the heading statement of purpose where it says Sandwich Guildhall Muse Museum is intended to be the end, etc. That, that is the whole thing, including the legislation to explain how the museum exists, how it's allowed to oh, operate. Sorry, that whole it's thing, the whole paragraph. Yeah, that whole thing is what was on the it's previous, previous yeah, documents. Yeah. I see, thank you. And then you also asked, um, to um, add this to any approved, already approved policies. So they're the two items I need to ask for. So if there's not any more questions, um, I'd like to propose that. Councillor Robertson proposing. Proposing that, thank you. And did we have a seconder? Councillor Ripley. And all those in favour, please share the statement of purpose. Thank you, that's unanimous. Thank you very much on that one. <clears throat> and item number eight is the access policy and this is for members to receive the updated access policy and decisions are required and these were attachments 5a, 5b and 5c and if you have any questions on those um, we have a recommendation members are asked to recommend the trustees approve the access policy for the museum if you have any questions or queries on the access policy, we have the expert with us to answer those this evening. Time is very pleased with this actually. Yeah. Oh, I beg your pardon, I'm sorry. Yeah. Sorry, I'm just looking at the question. Are they the asking the question which isn't relevant to this particular document, but I am about the access of individuals um, to the museum currently. But I'm not clear what the position is, particularly in relation to the archives. Um, and you know, I'm aware that the archives have been steadily moved about quite a lot. What is the position of individuals who wish to use the archives currently? Um, I'm just having a quick look. That's it right. should be listed. Um, so, yeah, under reference collections. And under it's, where? Is so, it's under, collection. it's under collections access. It's page five of the um, policy. It covers the, the current <coughs> situation, which is the um, what I would say is the, what, you, what a professional organisation would, would do, which is that people aren't allowed direct access to the collections form because we're trying to maintain our inventory and keep yes. things organised. Yeah, right. So um, uh, inquiries are basically taken. So it says here, then I judge them on a case by case basis. Generally, it's um, that I, you know, I accept all of them. If it's information, for example, that that we can't supply because of GDPR, then I have to, I would say that because it's important for people's reputation to stay young organisations. Um, but otherwise what happens is I usually ask some questions to clarify what, what the details are that have been researched um, and then I would locate the items that are relevant and book a room in the guild hall and bring them there and then I, I will stay in the room um, and I'm happy to answer questions for things generally while someone views the item. Um, and that's the case for a member of the public. So I do have a, I have a, written in here about a research inquiry form, which is something that I would like to kind of, which I have had as a process that needs to be implemented more because perhaps in the future it might, there might be a way of volunteers being trained to. Um, on this, 
I, I don't think where the collection is at the moment, it's fair to ask volunteers to do that because it, it because of the difficulty in accessing information. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, and if I could follow up on that. So, um, the, the access or the inquiry form mm -hmm. would be on the museum website, is that right? It, I don't think it is. I think at the moment it, it requests, there is a, there's a form where you can basically use to send an email to, to me. Um, but I could, I think our website limits us on, on what we could, what sort of form we can make. Um, so I don't think that is something I could do, but I could definitely list the information I need, which I'm sure I've already said on the website anyway. Um, I did supply some of them to the VIC because they get inquiries that way. Um, but again, it's one of those situations, I think, where the procedure of how this works needs to be <coughs> written and explained to all staff members so that we, we can have a procedure that everyone has an idea of how it works. Okay, can I keep asking? Oh, wait, um, yeah. Councillor Black, could yeah. I come back yeah. to you? Yeah. I've, I've got my Spanish in position, I've got four points I want to make. Oh, right, okay, so, please. Pray continue, Councillor Anderson, okay. then okay. Councillor Black. Please. So, uh, I think it would be really interesting and useful for this committee if included in the data, which I hope we will be receiving about um, the museum, as I outlined it earlier in the meeting, it would be very helpful to know the numbers of inquiries mm -hmm. um, because, and how they vary, um, because you're, I mean, you're suggesting that you should be, you will need, if somebody makes inquiry, a room will have to be booked, you will have to be present. Uh, that's a lot of resource mm -hmm. for single inquiry, and I think that we do need to as a committee to have the basic information so that we consider how best those kinds of research inquiries are handled and, and whether there are more efficient ways of doing it in terms of resource. So if we could if you could keep a record of, and <coughs> of inquiries, numbers and then and present them to us as part of the information that you will be presenting, I hope. Um, that would be helpful. Thank you. Right. Black, yeah, you um, I'm not I'm not being particularly obtuse this morning. I'm not really I'm struggling to see how a paid paper by B links into the rest of this document that looks really glad to come back. Echoing what um Council Angus has said, I was a little bit concerned about resources in 2.8, which is researchers will be supervised at all times by the coordinator or trained volunteers. Uh, is that realistic? And I think that's part of the question Council Anderson was asking. Well, I would actually not be in favour of things being supervised, left on, people being left on supervised. Oh, I'm not suggesting that. I, I, but, I'm, but, um, I mean, that there is a worry about efficient use of resources mm -hmm. in relation to inquiries, and I think we need to know the rate of inquiries we've got. And well, are you going to be able to train up a number of volunteers to do the supervision? Because clearly, you've got expert knowledge and need to keep developing this work forward. Um, will you be training some volunteers to um, work with these things? So, I would like, uh, I think it is the at the moment, so well, firstly, I should say, inquiries. As much as I enjoy answering them, they are difficult to get to. It is difficult to um, have that capacity to answer them. Um, that's not to say that I don't manage to get to them, but that, that it is. I do agree with you. It's but at the moment, the reason for that is actually because of the way the collection is, in terms of if you know if they're not in our inventory list. Um, and they're not in a different list, the only way of, of locating things is to physically go into the attic or go somewhere and hope that I have, have kind of come across something that's relevant, which I, you know, I've developed a very good kind of map in my mind of what is where in the attic. So sometimes I usually am quite able to find information, but um, 
So that is the issue at the moment. Um, I, if I can't answer something, I usually do some a brief bit of research online and, and, and have a look at Kent Archive and National Archive and say there's actually information here and I will send a link to try my best to be as useful as possible. Mm. Um, I would like to have some volunteers trained. I think that is the answer um, to the resources um, situation with this. But as I said, I don't feel that it is fair with the way the collection is at the moment. You know, we don't have enough useful information for them to use, and I would still be required to put time in to help them, point them in the right direction. Um, they aren't allowed to access the attic. No. You know, it's kind of one of those situations where if it is in the attic and they were able to access it, I would find it quicker because I've probably seen it already. No, so it's just a case of we sort of, I'm, I'm managing it as best I can at the moment, and, and it will improve as the collection information mm. improves. And I will say that organisations do, you know, they do actually stop accepting inquiries or stop accepting object donations while they're doing this work, which we haven't done. Um, but that does happen. I'm not suggesting that we need to do that, but um, that, that is something that does happen sometimes. Yeah. Is this the, the time period that you suggested? Because I remember, I think I saw that they were four and a half years. So yeah. if we were to say to people, you can't come make an inquiry for four and a half years, I think they'd be in trouble. Yeah, I, I wouldn't advise it being four and a half years if, if yeah. we did do that. Yeah. Yeah. I was just going to say that. You know, the article this three years has been computerised in a lot of the stuff, isn't it? So people can remotely, so if you're at university or whatever, throughout the world, you can access stuff via the internet. Um, at the moment, the last, say, two years, three years, because of COVID, you know, <coughs> job with staff, I mean, that's not really complicated, but, but that's the idea, isn't it? That more stuff will actually go onto the internet. Well, there's a few... Uh, we've got all the basics. Yeah, and there's a few systems and various yeah. things that have to be put in place, yeah. um, including uh, the funds to be able yeah. to do that so yeah. we're, we're making the list because yeah. we are required to have an inventory yeah. um and there'd be a broad framework there won't there somebody so they can just sort of read off that so and... well our collection database system at the moment does not allow us to do that and yeah. if we wanted to we need a new system um but there is an there is a project in relation to ip facilities yeah. that need to be done anyway yeah, sure. um, we need a nice grant for that won't we <laughs> yeah. that's, that's, that's the idea anyway, Councillor, that was to remotely access the, yeah, the, the information. More like physical supervision of someone looking at the demolition and collection. Mm -hmm. And don't forget, the back where I've got is quite in the middle in the British Museum, mm -hmm. where you've got tiny items mm -hmm. that you've got. The supervision is, has to be very tight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. you have some valuable items. Mm -hmm. um, two very brief points. Um, how would you describe um, 3.1? Um, the use of social media channels at the moment and the website because obviously you're majoring in, in this on the things like people who are not uh, based locally, can't travel locally and so on. Well, how would you describe that situation at the moment? As in how I'm managing to use social no, media? How, how, how good is it? How much is it, is, is it used? And have you got plans to further develop it? So I use I do my best to use social media on a regular basis to share the history and share the, um, the collection. It is a way of providing collection access. Mm -hmm. um, so I do my best to do that. Um, it does require quite a lot of work, mm -hmm. um, but I'm aware exactly. that it's very important. Um, it's, again, it's one of those things that it, in most museums, or certainly in museums that are slightly bigger, that would be one person's job. So um, I do the best that I can do, which is, is writing the posts and, and editing them. And, and um, I do check and respond to comments and things like that. But I, um, and I also do collect the statistics on that. But it's, you know, it's the most yeah. it, it was not intended as a criticism of trees. I was just like trying to yeah. understand how you did. Well, the very last point I've got is 6.2. What about TV crews and everything else? Um, you know, should Susan Cowan decide to come to visit Sandwich again? Mm -hmm. This implies we can't allow any filming in there. So that is for, I think, this is in relation to members of the public. Mm -hmm. um, of course, if someone hired it, it's different, it's private use, but the, the concern 
concern around filming is, is there's a few different issues. Security is, is a big one. Mm -hmm. um, it can be used as a way of gathering information about a, about a place um, mm -hmm. rather than generally filming because it's interesting. And, and, um, so that is the concern. Also, um, yeah, data protection, there could be people there that maybe don't want to be filmed. Um, that's really the, the reason for that. Obviously, some are hired at private use, that, that would be different. This, I would say that that would be covered in a different policy, um, probably one by uh, the Public Trust as the organisation in charge yeah. of the field group. Exactly. I would say. Yeah. Is that no more questions. No more questions. <laughs> Thank you very much. So the recommendation that um, members are asked to recommend that, that the trustee approves the access policy for the museum. So um, is that a proposal? Thank you very much. That's the proposal. And did we have a second? Councillor Malik is sending that. All those in favour of the access policy? Thank you very much. Number nine is collections documentation policy and members are to receive the updated collections documentation policy. A decision is required on this item and this is attachment 6A and 6D. And this is to approve the museum's collections documentation policy. The recommendation is for members are asked to recommend the trustee approves the collections documentation policy for the museum. Did anybody have any inquiries on this? So I think, is this where my question about oh, indeed. an inventory is relevant? Please jump in at this uh, point, Councillor Fortescue. Well, I think it says 7.1, the museum should be able to produce a complete list mm. of every object or group of objects within its collection and their location. Is that a, a statement of intent? Or is that, does that reflect what the situation is at present? Um, that is a statement of intent, but that is a requirement under accreditation. They want to know, so we should be able to provide that list for um, advising on when we would be able to provide that. Um, so under this is under the inventory procedure, and it's basically stating that we should be able to do this um, and these are the documentation procedures and things that we should be doing so for example um, that every group of objects or all object um, has to have a unique number and a name and a group description that's part of what we're doing in the inventory process um, so yes it's not something that we can do but we should be able to do but so we don't actually at the moment have an inventory that's why this going to be we're working, so we've done, we've listed just over 5,000 objects right. so far. And um, are some of the objects going to be photographed? Are they going to be photographed? In, in, in the so, um, collect, the database has the ability to have photographs in it, and that would be great that we could. But the priority at the moment is listing the information, and it is kind of photographing items is, is a whole project in itself yeah. that will come afterwards because it's a lot of. Um, there's kind of the, the work to be done to kind of you know assign those photographs with numbers and, and then add them to the database and things like that. So I think the main aim is that we get an inventory written um, or an inventory listed and we can hopefully get our database to the correct position it needs to be in to be able to transfer that information and start um, looking at past information and assessing. There's quite a lot of there's quite a lot of issues that we need to solve, really, I think. Um, so that's, yeah, but in the um, documentation planning, which I've done so far, which is the next item, I, you can sort of see the various oh, things that I think I've flagged as things that I think should be done. Can I ask a question? Yes. Okay. Oh, I think, uh, um, the first question is just, would you like to look at um, uh, paragraph four on the penultimate word, your title? Just to show you what a, a detailed brief. Sorry. <laughs> well done. You've read the policy so many times. I, I, I don't know, it, think it, you've known it's to It's total, total, total quality, believe me. I've done total quality instead of total quality. Oh, 
Policy in accordance with section uh, okay. 5.14, mm -hmm. paragraph mm -hmm. 4, mm -hmm. can be accession mm -hmm. into the Chromium, I think you mean. Oh, yes, Chromium. Uh, okay, that's fine, I can find it. Oh, yeah. Just to prove I've read it. Let me say, there's an awful lot of work on the these things. If I'm asking questions, please don't think they're necessarily criticism. They're not. There is an awful lot of work on the work. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I understand that, but we need to get it right first time, every time. Mm -hmm. right. No, it's useful. Um, work, making them working on, you know, as the only paid member of staff in the museum, it's, it's no, important to have other yeah. people's thoughts. So. That's, our, that's the actual phrase and metro for this committee, is that we're here, all here to help and assist the museum mm. coordinators. So thank you very much, Councillor Flack. Yeah, I was just going to say, we have some stuff on permanent online, we have three items of David Transport Museum and some of the David Carpet. Is that, will you go and maybe check these items or? So they are... I don't want to go David Carpet on your behalf. They're not, they're, 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 they're not on permanent loan because we are not allowed to do permanent loans. Um, no. So the loan agreement for, um, it's actually the Princess of Wales Royal Regiment Museum. Yeah, yeah. Um, that was updated last year or year before, I believe. Okay. I, um, Um, and the Transport Museum. I believe the agreements are all in place. Yeah. Um, but I am aware that we should um, raise yeah. that something been, in the future. Yeah, I'm a bit aware because they've been using all the uh, calm seven names. We probably should have been doing. We, yeah, we, we, yeah, we were. We um, wanted triangles or something. Oh. We, yeah. Yeah, okay. no, I think it's uh, a, um, definitely an item for a, a future agenda. Okay, we'll be. I hope I suggest that we bring the pumps back and park them in the forecourt. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's, that's an emergency measure. Yeah. 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 Councillor Anderson. Yeah. Yeah. Just, I just remembered about permanent loan, or what seemed like a permanent loan for us, but it turned out not to be. And whether, I don't know whether you can inform us now, but at the next meeting, perhaps we could know what the position is with regard to the Roman firm. Because that was mm -hmm. an amendment last. And we're just waiting for a So, um, yeah, it's, it's on loan and the agreement's in place. Mm -hmm. And um, the item that was what involved it last time was confidential. So, mm -hmm. we plan to follow an update now. Indeed, thank Indeed. you for that. So, members are asked to recommend that the trustees approve the collections documentation policy for the museum. Do I have a proposer for this item? Councillor Franklin and the seconder? Yes. Councillor Roberts, no. So, that's okay. it, thank you. And all those in favour of this document? Thank you very much, that's unanimous. Thank you there. Item number 10, which is the members' uh, collection documentation planning. And this is members <coughs> to receive a note a report about collections, documentation, planning, and this is attachment 7A and 7B. <coughs> Questions on this one? Oh, yes, indeed, please do. Um, yeah, I just wanted to say, so we have to have a documentation plan um, so this is the beginnings of that, it's the analysis um, before the plan um, takes place. I thought it would be useful to demonstrate um, the work that is required um, and where we're at um, in relation to what's required of us. So it's basically us, we're assessed, I've assessed against the primary procedures, which are the ones we have to meet, um, that includes inventory, um, and that's what I just wanted to meet. Thank you very much for that. So, just on the I must be a bit dull. Spectrum. Yeah. Can we just define what Spectrum is? So, what um, Spectrum it? is um, uh, produced by the Collections Trust. It is the national standard for museum um, collections management. Sorry, I couldn't have included that. Um, and so, there's a lot of <coughs> procedures that sit underneath that. 
um, we are required to meet nine of them, and there are others that, that are useful when they have documentation that, that can, I can use to support me in my work. So, but yeah, if there's nine of them that I've listed here, those are the ones that we are supposed to meet. Um, so they they are very simple procedures for how we do the work. For example, um, object entry is, is the procedure of every object has a specific form, sign written, and the owner understands they're transferring ownership if that's what we're asking of them. Um, another requirement is that we have a procedural manual that sets all of these out, so I am part way through that. Um, but it's a big document because it's, it's all of the details down to where, where someone could find the form they need to use for that procedure. So that is, I don't think it has to be approved, um, but I will put it on an agenda in the future for you to, to be aware of it. Thank you very much for that. So, um, members are asked to receive and note the analysis within the spectrum for the collections documentation plan. Are we happy with this? If so, yeah. uh, Councillor yeah. Franklin? Yeah. No, I've just passed you the press. Seconding? Uh, oh, I'd just like to ask a question. question first. If somebody gives something to the museum and signs the uh, relevant transfer of ownership document, if the item is then exhibited with a label saying what it is, will the label indicate that the item was donated uh, to the museum or not? So, um, if an item is, so if we sign an object entry form and someone agrees to transfer the title of ownership and, um, and we definitely own that item, we don't have an obligation to do that they could specify it as a condition of the donation but usually we wouldn't accept something i probably wouldn't accept something with a condition attached because it it's you know it's easy in 10 years time for that to, to someone to be aware of that and that can be quite difficult so we're kind of advised not to accept things with conditions attached um, if it was on loan then yeah there's usually a credit line but we have no obligation to say who's given it to us um, and i think we have to ask their permission anyway to provide their name. Um, yeah, so I think that's kind of hopefully that answers that. Okay, good answer. So they are discretion. Yeah. Well, I just noticed different museums have different policies. Some we, we do have some that say donated by a certain person, but mm. that's not something that I would do and, um, unless I, I would do it for a loan. So <coughs> would be So, um, I believe we have this. Councillor Franklin proposed. And did we have a second? Uh, we haven't yet. Oh, Councillor Fortescue second. Yep. All those in favour of the documentation plan? That's all in favour, thank you. And item number 11 is the collections management plan. Members are to receive a note or report regarding collections management planning. And this is attachments 8A and 8B. And I'm not sure if any of the committee members have any questions on this. Did you have anything Can to I say? Indeed, museum so coordinator. This is not, so this is not something that's listed for a presentation. Documentation plan is and that's feed into our formal plan, but this, I think this is a useful thing assess where we're where we're at and it's not it's not perfect but it at least details some of the information and will hopefully support this informal plan when we get there. Um, again it's to demonstrate uh, the work that we're doing and, and also but I think occasionally there's questions about is the collections work that we're doing you know when when will it be finished or is it finished yet things like that it's just a demonstration that it goes on past the inventory project there's a lot of different things that come up oh, super thank you very much for that a question from council black yeah i mean it's a massive task and of course it puts some uh, realistic time scales on it and so 2027 we get inventory complete which is of course the most critical item um how well, are you doing with recruitment of volunteers, and are you getting? Well, I don't I don't mean to phrase this in a negative way. The right kind of volunteers who can actually do some of the the backroom stuff. A lot of volunteers, when I've been a volunteer, very keen to the front, 
fund it back a bit. But you've got the Michael House to do, and I think one of our uh, fellow councillors is also bidding off the back of that work. Do you, have, do you get the right kind of volunteers in sufficient numbers, is my question. So, um, we actually have a really great team of collection volunteers. Um, yeah. We have kind of established a nice uh, group. It is, there is not too many, but I think that's also, there's only so many that we can have in terms of resources, computer space that we have in the room at the moment. Um, but we have, yeah, I think we have a nice, a good group that can kind of work quite well together. Um, so that's really great. I, I do actually have a college um, student doing work experience at the same time. And so um, he's been very helpful actually at the repacking on the repacking project. And so I've been working with him for that. Um, I, this is one of those things that obviously the time frame we could shorten how long it would take if we had more volunteers. But again, there are certain questions and certain things where it, areas where the work is just slightly more complicated. And it, I feel that even if I'm not needing to kind of directly supervise that I, that I should be available to answer those questions, even if I'm doing my own work, but in that space. And it is um, me having the capacity to have that time because I work Wednesday to Sunday, any, any meetings or anything that I can have with other people that work Monday to Friday, I, I only have three days to fit them in. Um, so we, I would like to recruit more collection volunteers, but I have, there's a concern around my ability to, to provide them enough support. Um, Thank you very much. <laughs> Are there any other questions on this side? This one's raised a point that the collection volunteers at this stage are I'm, sh I'm sure they are. I'm sure they are. Yeah. But I, I, you know, I would reiterate Millie's point that um, it would be very difficult to have more volunteers yeah. simply because Millie has to be there really to oversee. Of course. Uh, and we're always, you know, questioning her about should we do this, should we do that. So it's not like she can settle down to her own work in the time, really. So it's a, it's a resource. What if the key issues is um, that the numbering system that have been used are confusing mm. and so a lot of the questions are which number is the right number to use because this, this document has three different numbers on it um, and that is it's one of those things that it, it is difficult to understand and, and sometimes the, the right number is not on that document and then I make a decision about which is the right one to use and it sounds like it's quite a silly detail but it's really important um, and it's not always one that a volunteer can, obviously, can make that sort of decision and, and or even there is other things like whether something should be listed individually or not or you know sort of things like that. Don't worry, the, the British Museum has uh, managed to have a collection which they haven't catalogued for 160 years and things started disappearing for some reason. Yeah, on eBay, I don't know. Well, yeah. so apparently they put them on eBay. eBay. Apparently so I, I can spot them museum. myself. Yeah. <laughs> so members are asked to look at what well, we've got to this yeah. kind of class yeah. recommending. Yeah. Did we have them? Oh yeah, did we have a proposal? No, 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 yeah. We haven't. Oh. And members are asked to receive and note the collections management plan. Uh, are you proposing this? Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Councillor Rick is proposing this and we will have a second and oh, Councillor yeah. Black is seconding this. And all those in favour of the management yeah. plan? Thank you. Yeah. That's unanimous. Thank you very much. <coughs> Item is item 12, care and conservation planning. Members are to receive and note a report regarding the collections care and conservation planning. And these are items 9A and 9B. This is the bit where I thought the most amount of discussion would actually emanate from, but um, we shall see. <coughs> Indeed, oh, please do, museum. Um, so a care and conservation plan is, is a requirement of accreditation. So again, like the class planning, uh, uh, documentation planning information, this is the initial analysis. Um, and the, uh, it's against the benchmarks that are provided by the National Conservation Service. Um, so that's where we've started. We 
do our best to meet these, and there's certainly ones that are more of a priority <coughs> than others, um, and it's going to be an ongoing process, but it will be filtered into this actual planning document, and then that will obviously be on the floor for planning as well. Super, thank you very much for that. So I like these um, rat ratings as they call them to show where we are with things. It's very visual, very easy to see where we are with those. Did we have any questions on the care and conservation planning? Could I make a very small pedantic point? Um, pedantic? Pedantic, yes. Oh, indeed. Uh, statements not relevant to the museum or those which the museum has already. I think it should be have rather than has. Which the museum which has already. Section is it? Well, I pick up on your right. I'm wrong. Yes. <laughs> I'm wrong. Ooh. Pet, pet and trick and death. Councillor Mallet, first. It's, it's uh, totally unrelated in a sense. It's your obviously having the skills and your training people in the care and conservation departments and, and the like. It's whether that could be incorporated into some kind of you know, presentation that the public can come to. Because I'm sure throughout Sandwich, there must be a huge volume of similar quality, museum grade stuff mm -hmm. that people, including myself, are thinking, how do I keep this for the next generations? Mm -hmm. um, and just something so that you can sort of say, you know, do a presentation, just to run through the key points. Yeah. Don't need to answer now, it's just something well, that that would be one thing. Well, I, I have actually <laughs> considered, um, and it's something that I, I'm not sure exactly how it would work, but it's something I'd like to do, but again, it is a capacity mm -hmm. issue mm -hmm. and resources, oh, whether okay. or not mm -hmm. the inventory and repacking projects can be parts of them potentially done in a workshop format where people can see what we do behind the scenes but also mm. do some of it for us as a way of but learning how what, what yes. we do but also you know it would it would it would require more resources and time than we would probably get out of the results but when I have university students here they they did some inventory which they really enjoyed so they did it on paper because of the resources we had at the time which did then require me or um, some other volunteers to enter it into the database but Repacking, I think, you know, that is something. And then, then you do learn about the conservation materials and how we pack the boxes and, and the types of paper we use and things like that. So it might be an idea for the future that we could think about that as a project. Can I just ask a clarification of Councillor Mallet? So are you talking about educating people how to conserve material in their own homes? Hmm. Yes. Because that, I mean, I'm aware, I've got a whole lot of stuff, which is not relevant to Sandwich, but I don't know how to keep it properly mm -hmm. at home. It's like and I'm aware thing. that... What is it? How to get it? Yes. <laughs> and, but also, you know, this museum and archive is not, I imagine, that keen on getting donations at the moment. <clears throat> It's not some good inventory of what we already have. But so that we can keep it and donate it later. You know, if we could if we could be educated as to how to pack things, what sort of paper mm. to put them in, what mm. sort of box, um, what sort of labeling, um, mm. you know, what do we need to say about its origins and um, where it might usefully go. Um, that you know, which archive it's used to go to. So that sort of information, I think, would be very useful and interesting. Mm -hmm. That's something that we could uh, weave into the income yes. sector of yes. things. Yes. So, yes. so we, if we have the expert skills and knowledge, mm -hmm. perhaps we can um, do a workshop and um, charge charge people to attend the workshop. So, mm -hmm. medieval trust do, for example, calligraphy for the fee. Indeed, they do. They do. Yeah. So um, the recommendation is members are asked to receive a note. Can I just bring up one 
Lord God, I'm sure we'll be poo-pooed by many people, the idea, but I am concerned about cleaning and pest management. Yes. Yeah. Sure. Oh, and we need to know about it in our own homes as well. Because... Well, it's more about the management of the pests, actually, yeah. pest traps. Yeah. Pest, uh, and I know we're not up to that stage at the moment, but it concerns me that they're talking about having pest traps, which oh. are... Uh, set and retrieved three times a year at least and I find that quite disturbing in, in terms of are we talking mice, rats, what? Insects, what you want. Yeah so um, usually what we use um, in my experience is in the past we do have traps here that have been put out but again it's, there's quite a lot of information there's, or tasks within this particular plan that are should be done on a regular basis, and they are the, the ones that I would say are, are difficult to to get to and to kind of implement. Um, pest traps, they are sticky traps that catch insects. Um, usually, if we can catch, you know, if we can kind of monitor the insects, then um, hopefully that also monitors some of the other things that might be around. But, um, um, yeah, I, I, I I think, so I think we're we're in a better we're in a better um, position with the collection moving because um, in the attic there is a chance that something larger than a spider could get caught in a trap, but not where we're moving the collection to. And I don't think um, yeah, there's there's they're literally like folded triangles about this big that they walk across and they go up there. Anyway. Um, Okay. They're quite shallow. I don't, I, I, my concern actually I'm is I'm for sad. mice and rats if they get trapped and are left there. Because oh, yes. I think it's very unfortunate. Um, mm -hmm. No, I understand. Is, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I don't think that we will get um, mice trapped in this building um, down where we where where they they will be. Yeah. I don't think that is something that happened. I've not seen it in any rodents in the building. I can definitely ask um, another member of staff that's been here longer if they've come across any and we can um, um, sort of just make sure those traps aren't in those places. Um, but and make sure those generally traps are they're regularly checked. Yeah, no, yeah. So in the past my experience is that they were checked every month. Um, not necessarily moved, but they would be checked. But also we have staff that are cleaning the building and things that we would notice. Um, and it is um, but yeah, I, obviously I do my best to avoid that. But if an animal or a rodent did get caught in a trap, then that has to be removed immediately because it will attract something larger. Well, a humane man trap in the room, probably. Yes, I would like to think they're a humane trap. I yeah, don't like can. to think it is. Oh, they are. Yeah, 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 for sure. Well, yes, yeah, so we've got some at home because of the yeah. trap in the room. But yeah, I don't like to well, think yeah. being trapped and just left there. No, no. Council Black has a question. It's on a very similar issue. Uh, climate change is actually increasing the risk of insect infestation mm -hmm. considerably. And I, I've noticed that there's nothing in here um, about that. And I think I know English Heritage is having a much bigger problem with things like clothes, clothes moth and, mm -hmm. and, and so on, and other forms of infestation. So I was a little bit surprised to see nothing specifically about the fact that climate is changing. The species that we're getting in are relatively alien to the uh, UK. Some of them are not particularly nice to deal with them. Mm -hmm. And then we get Asian hornets in. Um, yeah, so the one of the things that we do, which um, mm. is not the easiest, but I try my best to do, is that when items go into our collection store, for example, they should be quarantined before. Mm. So any insects aren't travelling in there. Um, I actually, uh, there was actually something that was meant to move to the collection store recently, which I um, need to put to the side and um, to be quarantined. Um, so that is something that we, that is a procedure that we, we kind of do our best to do. Um, if, if it can't be quarantined in a, in a different space, there's definitely ways around um, processes that we can use mm -hmm. to do that. Um, I have actually produced. So I do have I have I didn't put it on this agenda because I I 
I'm not sure if I want to add any extra information still, but it's basically a, a collections, what I call it kind of like collection health and safety, something to that effect. So it actually, it, it will be for other staff members as well, which is why I haven't, because I think once it's communicated properly, we can um, share it. But it's, um, it has information about handling of collections um, and movement, health and safety is a big one, so, um, and the pests. Um, so it, it details, um, I think, most of the types of pests that we could come across, where you might find them, what signs you might see, um, and also the hazards, because we do have, we could have hazardous collections, for example, things with um, asbestos in them, things like that. So mm -hmm. what if you saw any of these things that you might do? Um, but as I said, I, I want to check that I'm happy with that document, and I'll put it on an agenda, and then it'll be communicated. I think what will probably be done is the relevant sections to the different members of staff will be provided just to save them needing to you know mm. read everything at least for example caretakers can be aware of the key the, the things that they should be aware of like for example moving collection items which they might do sometimes um, just the procedures they should follow um, to handle things correctly so um yeah i have noted those and, and when that is on the agenda um i'm happy for the, the feedback if, if there's extra things I could add or things I could research to, to add, definitely. Um. Okay, thanks. So members are asked to receive no details regarding the care and conservation benchmarks. Um, is everybody happy with that? Thanks for Ripley proposing. I'll second. Thanks for Anderson second. All those in favour? That's unanimous there. Thank you very much. <coughs> Number 13, University of Kent's Employability Support Scheme. Members to receive and note a report regarding the University of Kent's Employability Point Scheme. And this is attachment number 10. Yeah. If it may not be in the report. Are you happy to yeah. propose that? Yeah, so glad to talk to you about the students when they've been here, so I think they do a very good job. One question on that, yeah, Councillor no, Anderson. Uh, I suspect this is a predictable point that I'm about to make. Um, under um, the student um, <coughs> who has listed the things that we might do, uh, um, under point six, Designing activities relevant to each key stage, which can also be used for weekend and holiday dropping sessions. Um, no, no, it wasn't. I'm terribly sorry. Um, can I just uh, item seven? I just wanted to clarify. This isn't. Um, this is work that she has done. Yes. Not, not a recommendation. No. What she, what no, she no, 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 no. No, I, I, I totally agree. Self guided tours related to different topics. I'm sorry, I wasn't on the right one. Mm -hmm. And here we go. I would like a Jewish tour of Sandwich. I discussed, I said to her, there, there is a tour that I talked about for the tour that you do. Yeah. Um, I said there is, there is one that's in it. Okay. I'm sure it's one that's in it. Okay, so it's good. Um, okay. Yes, well, on that point, just automatically, uh, Councillor Anderson. Oh, yeah, if you know Harnish Street up there, it's the top corner. You know, Kim does bakery. There used to yeah. be a cafe there. I know. I so know. You did know it's that. part of the Jewish tour. Yes, yeah, so there's a bit of coffee, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 the Kinders. Yes, the Kinders. Yes. So uh, members were asked to um, receive a note for report regarding the employment point scheme. Yeah. So, um, uh, Councillor Franklin did propose. Oh, thank you very much. And could we have a seconder, Councillor Ripley? Okay. All those in favour? Please show. Thank you. That's unanimous there. Item number 14, um, which was Income Generation Project. Members to receive and note a report regarding an income generation project for a museum. And this was attachment number 11. And um, this is to receive the report and note the information therein. Did anybody have questions? Councillor Black has a question. Please continue. Um, yeah, I, I was a little bit confused. Under phase one, that we're going to, you know, we, we're going to have new merchandise.
merchandise stock um, for the museum. But I got the impression it wasn't branded for Sandwich Museum. Is it? What would make people buy it if it wasn't branded for Sandwich Museum? Um, so that is perhaps I should need to word that in a better way. It, so the items that I'm, I've looked at will will have the museum's name written on it, but it won't necessarily have um, the branding kind of logo because we discussed that about um, in the last meeting about kind of altering that logo. So right. the item, the, those items, they will have the you know, for example, um, they will have the names on of, of the museum on them. Um, but they're they're items that I've looked at that where we can you know, where we can have the text written on there, and it doesn't necessarily need lots of other branding attached to it. Whereas the the next phase or one of the phases after that, where it does have the it would be something that might need more of the branding. Mm -hmm. um, but that will be sort of done after we've had that discussion and that meeting about the branding. Um, yeah, um, that's what okay. makes sense. Okay. Can I ask, what is the policy about buying books for the stock of the museum itself? Um, there isn't a policy on it. Um, I will say they are, the reason they're not in one of the first phase necessarily um, is because they cost a fair amount to purchase and that we actually wouldn't, we don't earn that much off um, a sale. So it's really a case of just trying to generate that income um, so that we're in the best position to be able to purchase those items that perhaps ex expand what we have as stock, but we might not necessarily earn as much money off it. Um, I can't perhaps help. answer that one as well. And the local history society has the same problem. We have like a back stock where we bought books, um, a, a large number, say 10 or or 15 books from an author and we've still got them 10 years later and um, so they're, they're very difficult unless they're on a subject that is um, popular at the time or what have you that are, are to people's likings you can be left with up to 10 copies costing 10 to 15 pounds each um, so and for a, a history society that's uh, a lot of money tied up and I should imagine for the museum, if you had say 20 copies of a book that's not selling or, or selling very slowly, one or two a year, that's a lot of, of money tied up in an asset. So I do agree with you that books are something that would be difficult. I know yeah. the History Society does struggle, really struggle. Um, I, I would like to have a um, kind of varied offering of, of books, but I think one of the also things is because of that reasoning I, I would like to establish um, kind of more of a reputation for the shop um, and kind of perhaps more marketing if we can um, before we and also more income to kind of put back into the project before we start thinking about expanding into more books. Well, I was just going to say about the um, the the stock, really. Um, certainly, when um, I've been in the museum and in earlier times, when there was m there were more little small bits and pieces, um, the stock went much quicker yeah. because it's sort of thing that children would buy. Um, whereas now there's very little stuff like that to buy, and you know, it just doesn't look. If you go into any museum shop. It's usually the little bits and bobs that are, are, are yeah, that children like or, or little memento type things that people go for. And I think if you've got local donors in, yeah, that's that sort of stuff in, it would it would, you know, increase the, the turnover. Time that's kind of the idea for the first phase, I think, is I've been looking at um, the different suppliers and, and kind of looking at uh, quite like a spreadsheet of sort of how much maybe the minimum is that we have to buy and, and, and what we could realistically sell them for and what we would earn and looking at how much profit do we make off of these items versus other items um, <coughs> that's been what we've kind of worked mm -hmm. on. I mean I just thought that you know if you generate enough income to start with then you can look that's, to yeah. spread you know the, that's the idea. Yeah. yeah. Also as I say it could be duplicating because the History Society does have a, a regular 
um, reputation for selling books yeah. and they are sold at uh, two or three outlets in the town there. Yeah. Councillor Fortescue. Yeah. Could I, I appreciate that the items in the museum shop are sold to make profit mm -hmm. for the museum but also sold to, for educational reasons mm -hmm. and the Hospital Museum mission statement was to uh, educate. Um, and as regards sales, I and mean, this is obviously uh, uh, a specific example where I have to declare an interest, but uh, Councillor Anderson thought uh, seven copies were sold uh, the day that the um, exhibition was, uh, the recent exhibition was formally open. So, um, oh, that was because I only had seven copies. So, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so I think you know if the book relates closely to uh, items on the display in the museum, yeah. then there is a hope that yeah. sales will no, take place. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's true. Yeah. Councillor Frank, I don't know whether people would want to put stuff there and then they they put it and then they. We just get say a pound if we sell it on their behalf, Absolutely. rather than we lay out. But I was just going to say when they did the uh, the Dell stream, the hardback was ten pounds, and then they did another up supplement, didn't they? Five pounds, mm -hmm. but they were sold downstairs by the uh, front office. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the town council purchased those yeah. to do with the Dell, and I think they sold ever so quickly. And there was an offer doing a, a new book was offered, they turned it down, didn't they? Yeah. The town did. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So yeah. they could. Just, just a brief one on the profit. So two hundred and fifty pounds goes into profit. Just to be sure that this doesn't um, be taken off any grants coming to the museum. It is profit that goes for something else. Stock. Know, to, even more. Well, the more yeah, stock is covered anyway. Yeah. But yeah. It, um, it's it's almost you know, a gift to yourself almost to you know, not quite like that. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah. so it's a bit more flexible. Yeah, the idea is that, yeah, that I, these might not be the exact figures, but whatever the profit is, um, half of it, so essentially more, will go back into kind of the operational amount of money that we, that it is not ring fenced for any specific project, but sits there uh, for us to use for operational reasons. And then the other, the rest of that money will go back into the project to kind of yeah. get more stock. Um, and hopefully we can um, sell it the shop from there and then and then hopefully it will kind of be operating at a, a better level with more income. Well we have um, the museum coordinator and I have actually had a discussion on this matter as to yeah. what, what, what can happen and, and about trying to establish the museum to stand on its own two feet basically. Yeah, yeah I was just gonna say because I remember one time they bought a load of thimbles and a walking stick badges and they and they feed them. It was actually giving them away or put the children with a thimble just to try and get them to buy other stuff and buy something to get a thimble. I think we've only just sold out those thimbles. <laughs> oh. Oh. Have to <laughs> wow. I think they overstocked them. <laughs> Most of the children ask what on earth are these? Yes. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so. So the recommendation is for well, members are asked to receive a note the report regarding the income generation for the museum. Do I have somebody to propose that? Yeah. Councillors Ripley and Mallet. Mallet so. And all those in favour? Any abstaining? Any against? Item number 15 is the date and time of the next meeting, which is uh, to be confirmed. <coughs> it will be the, the quarterly one that you would be expecting. Yeah. So, got over. Sorry, got over. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. yeah. Quarterly one. Yeah. Thank you very much, everybody. That closes this meeting. Thank you very much for your time and discussions on these matters to establish the museum and archives on the correct footing. Thank you very much.